Thank you for joining us today for another intriguing conversation on all about PR. I'm your host Arunjit Ratan and today's session is brought to you by a special arrangement with PRPUI, Public Relations Professionals of India, a fab group of professionals that is dedicated to upskilling the PR community. Today we take up a tricky subject, emotional quotient in PR. What does it mean when a journalist cribs about an insensitive pitch made by PR? How do you handle the backlash? This when the client on the other end also expects you to deliver the story on this trending topic. When you thought you had a slam down, the journalist obviously dis- disagrees. What is your pitch missing? Is EQ the missing ingredient? Can you include or learn EQ? How can you encourage that in your team? Lots of questions. And today, in an attempt to answer these and more, Dr. John Victor and Parul Chand. So before I add them on, let me introduce our panelists to you. Dr. John Victor is a clinical psychologist and the CEO of Mind Solace, known as John Sir, for his vast experience in conducting experiential learning workshops and understanding his students. His therapeutic relationship with the students is like you looking into a mirror, and he assists people in finding various perspectives affecting life at the moment. He has worked with some of the top companies globally. His 10 days long training course of counseling skills is one of the best in terms of training students to learn how to commence, conduct, and end therapy sessions. So welcome, John. Hi, everyone. Uh, and I'll also introduce, take a moment to introduce a second panelist for today. Uh, though she needs no introduction to the PR community, but I will still attempt one. Parul Chand, Editor-in-Chief and Partner PR Moments of India's leading online PR magazine. For those who don't know her, Parul is probably the loveliest media person to write from PR that you will deal with. Along with her duties at PR Moments, she's also part of the new Master's Media Course Committee for the Indian Institute of Mass Communication to be introduced in the summer of 2020 and takes up guest lectures for the Institute's postgraduate advertising and PR course. An IIMC alumni, uh, Parul started her career as a TV journalist in 93, reporting news with prestigious channels including BBC, CNBC, Dow Jones and Economic Times TV post which she switched careers and joined as a PR strategist for public health and social development. So without much ado, let me add her on. Hi. Hi guys. Uh, Very happy to be here on this Saturday morning. I hope you're enjoying your weekend. So how have you been? It's been, uh, it's been a fantastic couple of four or five months. Uh, I feel fortunate to have work and really good that uh, work is going on. I think in this day and age, that's one. That's something we should be all grateful for. Correct. So true. So let's uh, start the subject. Uh, you know, start the discussion because I believe this is something that a lot of our PR community members are waiting for. So let's start with you, Dr. John. Uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and your brush with the world of communication. And could you define EQ for our audiences before we delve into it? Right. First, let's uh, discuss about what is EQ. And right. It's- now, the concept of EQ is there in the world for a very long time. And Daniel Goldman wrote an amazing kind of book about emotional intelligence as well. And a lot of people talk about emotional quotient, but in reality, not many people are actually able to use it uh, to the fullest extent. Only some of the people who are trained or some people who have knack of, probably they learn things from their parents or they learn from their experiences. They're able to use that emotions very well because emotion quotient is to simplify that. It's like, you know, having an ability to understand and manage emotion encounters. Now, when you say that ability and understand the emotional encounters, if you have to, you know, understand that first, you need to have knowledge of your emotion, not just look, I'm angry, I'm upset, you know, or I'm happy, not just this, but in depth. Why? The re- what is the reason that you're actually angry with? And mm-hmm. what is making you to get upset? And what is the meaning you are actually giving? What is the perspective you're actually taking from that situation? 
these are all are actually learned behaviors once you have this understanding then you will be able to you know handle your emotions anybody who is not able to handle their emotions they definitely will not be able to handle emotions of other people if you're not able to handle other people's emotions then you're going to have a problems uh, in terms of your relationship you'll have problems in terms of your performance in your work related uh, you know uh, activities and overall but even can actually make a person unhappy as well uh, something is very interesting to understand here to elaborate a little bit more in a common kind of sense it's like being objectively sensitive towards your own self is emotional intelligence and at the same time having the same objectively sensitive towards other people is one you know it's a very beautiful kind of thought process objectively sensitive towards self is it really possible for human beings that means you have to be objectively sensitive towards yourself the same thing you're actually showing that to other people that is empathy right? right so this is primarily like by definition by understanding this is a small interaction in terms of emotional intelligence and emotional quotient yes of course if you ask me about my uh, with you know communications yes uh, being a therapist uh, i'm not that good in terms of talking and having a conversation because uh, i need to learn a lot of language and to like you know speak correct language you know even to convey what you are actually feeling what you are thinking what you want to convey it's mm-hmm. one of the most important thing is having that communication skill just having the communication skill is also not is going to help you you need to have that empathetic understanding of understanding the person what the person is going through and seeing and observing what the person is not communicating also mm-hmm. that means of course we listen to a lot of people what they talking i mean you know you you already know people who talk about communication train communication skills they tell 30 40% is only the words and 60 70% is the body language Correct. so i heavily give a lot of importance to everything what the person is talking and what the person is not talking but conveying as well so my brush with this communication actually came uh, almost 20 years back and i train myself in terms of you know getting into some medical school and you know learn things and how to understand and read a lot about in a human behavior human emotions observed from you know karju is actually talking about you know parenting earlier before we actually started this i mean i actually like been forced to learn about how animals deal with their kids how they train their children so i had to because to train parents in normal human beings i had to actually spend more time in understanding about how animals train their children and that actually gives amazing kind of insights how we parent our children from there onwards i learned to be like you know communicating and communicating is not just only telling the words you have to make yeah. the other partner or the person to understand 100% what is that you want to convey if you fail that to convey that 100% probably the other person is going to get something else rather than what you actually want him to understand so it's very important for you to understand what you want to speak and also it's your responsibility to make the other person also to get what you intend to like you know make the person understand so if you're able to manage this thing i think you'll be able to communicate pretty well i don't know that john has set a context for us on what eq is what is your perspective on how eq fits into a mad and possibly madder pr world Yeah. So, firstly, uh, thank you, Tarun, for curating sure. these wonderful contributions. And at the end moment, I'm really pleased to partner with you uh, on this. So, thank you. Uh, firstly, I think uh, taking for uh, taking uh, the context of what John has talked about empathy. Uh, what happens when uh, when you are pitching stories which are trend worthy? You, uh, you, it's it's you know very easy to get carried away by by what, very easy to get carried away with with what the client is telling us and you know what what and you have to deliver that story on your Excel sheet. You have to say you have to make sure your category A, category B, category C media is done. So it's very easy to get carried away. But if you hmm. fail to project that story in a sensitive manner. and in my mind in pr sensitivity entails that when you look at topics like covid when you look at topics like mental health it's important to put the issue first and not the brand that i think is the biggest sign of being empathetic when you're doing actual pr work out there in the field the moment you start pushing the brand first is when the media gets extremely upset and if you have the kind of reactions you had with the uh, with miss miss kumara mangalam 
which of course is another story altogether uh, but that's when you start having these kind of reactions the other Correct. place of empathy is actually with your client so what happens i what i've observed from you know meeting so many nice young pr professionals in the last seven years is that a lot of these uh, professionals are women and you may be young women so women in india are kind of conditioned not to push back uh, not to express their emotions in a way which is using that emotion to solve the business problem right. and uh, rather than uh, doing that what they do is that they they listen keep quiet and then go and deliver what they think they can deliver but what happens at that point is the client feels that you have understood and you will deliver but actually you are not able to deliver that for many reasons so there's a mismatch expectation mismatch which leads to uh, frustration emotions of wrong expectations and also further you know stress for the young person who's trying to do this so i Correct. think uh, where client and also uh, somewhere we have to understand the empathetic towards the business priorities of the client if you look at the business priorities of the client from an empathetic point of view then uh, you'll be able to understand why he's doing the branding because what happens to the pr professional is that two conflicting equally powerful forces are emotionally pulling you for their priorities the journalist Correct. at one end and the brand at the other end so mm. you are actually the counselor like john has to combine and mm. and come up with a pathetic uh, way to approach both of them so but i would say push the issue first when it comes to sensitive issues and we'll talk later about it but there are specific stakeholder ways of of in- interaction when you are uh, interacting with health topics which we'll talk about later content forms and i uh, will get into all that later i hope that answers uh-huh. some of it understand you know pr is no less stressful i think it's one of the most stressful jobs in the world in the last stat report that came out you're right you know you as pr professionals we are right in the middle of it and there are two very powerful forces that are pulling us in both directions while i mean today's day and age when job security is at risk when client security is at risk for that matter uh, the pressure is phenomenal you know for a young pr professional to be able to deliver a story on one end and however much eq we you know we talk about we talk about empathy we talk about mental wellness uh it's very difficult for them to be able to show that to their own people and that's where the disconnect happens i believe the case that you were mentioning about a very powerful person on twitter who dropped her agency and who happened to be in the mental wellness space but dropped her agency online on twitter in full view of everyone you know for making an insensitive insensitive pitch now here is where there is a huge disconnect in terms of perception you are talking you are in the mental wellness space and charity begins at home so why is it not that pr professionals who are working with you or employees who are working with you are not benefited by it there is also where i think a lot of pr professionals get that disconnect because they know that the client is possibly only doing this for pr yeah that is where there is a lack of authenticity that comes in and that is where i think a lack of conviction in what the client is actually proposing out there comes in and this shows through in the pr pitches that we are pushing out it doesn't matter to them whether it's sensitive not sensitive whether it's relevant not relevant because on one end the client would be pushing them and telling them you know coverage kidhar hai how many stories have you delivered today and that is where it all falls flat yeah i want to understand from you you know or uh, both of you for that matter when it comes to a situation like this yeah, where a client or a journalist takes to earlier it used to be a nasty phone call or a very nasty email right but now when it's come to a situation where they are looking at facebook linkedin and instagram or twitter for that matter where they are using these public platforms to belight and condescend you know various pr professionals naming and shaming them as such Uh, I don't think it's a very healthy practice. I want to understand from you how, what would you advise to the PR professional out there? While if we are in a little bit of a you know bubble where we all feel oh, somebody has wronged us, right? And all the journalists are like that, all the clients are like that. But you're right. At some point of time, we have to learn how to push back, right? What is what would be your advice in situations like this, and how does one push back? You know, Taranji, uh, one thing we need to understand here. Yes, of course. PR is one of the top five options in the world, which actually have severe amount of stress, right. and there is not any self-made. 
because it's a multi you said that it's a two dimensional one is the agencies and other one is your clients it really seems it's a multi dimensional kind of stress situation uh, mm-hmm. how it happens one pr agency comes and say okay we're going to do this 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 and they tell mm-hmm. we're going to get an articles and now other agencies come and say you know we want to get this account so they propose and we'll do 15 articles for you mm-hmm. now the dog eat dog kind of business where you are competing not just with clients time and money but you are also competing with the colleagues no you are actually pushing yourself too much more than what you can deliver hmm. now sir there is a rat race everybody wants to get that pie i mean if you really see yes of course growth is not that much compared to other professions if we really look at especially in pr it's hmm. slow and steady but it's growing in its own way i think much better than in earlier days it's picking up now now we see a lot of junior a lot of young people who come from mascom and you know other pr agency they start their own businesses and they they want to work very well and the top companies are already there they get their work and they actually decide and tell you know what they, they talk to their clients you know we can do only if they ask about 10 interviews the top company say no we can, we can get you five interviews no immediate stress will become half of top companies and uske niche jo companies hai they struck with less number of clients and more amount of work and they have to prove themselves again and again to deliver that so they are actually over delivering and over you know promising and try to over deliver now as a pr professional tell me one thing very clearly isn't it you know that very well in this kind of amount of money or amount of time Do you really think that you will be able to deliver what you promised me? Stop stressing yourself. No, I uh, see. End of the day, it depends on the leadership of the agency or the individual who's working out there to decide what is the limit. Exactly. Right? Now, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I got the answer. Now, if you really look at that, the leadership thinks you're doing okay, but you can do better. You know, you need to do even four steps further. Further. Now let us know. Ten people, ten people can stretch this year. Now we need to stretch the envelope. This is a concept which is actually going in leadership circle. We need to stretch that you know couple of more steps. In the process of stretching, we are compromising not just the company, the leadership, but your best employees. You are pushing them to press, and you are actually making them to commit more than what they can deliver. That's why you see PR people work more than twelve hours a day. If I'm not wrong, because I, I know I'm working with some of the clients who are in the PR industry, but they work so much and their sleep is less, and they struggle. They're not having good relationships, and they drink as well. They have all other things. I'm not blaming the leadership here. That's the kind of you know situation is actually happening. Now, if you really want to deal with that, you need to take care of yourself. You understand about your boundaries, where you can put a limit. Where how how much you can spread. So once you are able to handle those things, probably you will actually help yourself, and you will also help the company. Probably, Baki, whatever the like rest, I mean, which I missed out in related to PR, probably Parul is going to help you out. Okay, so before that, I'd like to you know kind of address that point when you mentioned uh, leadership teams, etc. See, PR is a very competitive field. Yes. Yeah, it's cutthroat competition at many levels, and more than ever, it's like. It's really, really, you know, critical for everybody to do that little bit extra, go that extra mile, right? While a lot of leadership teams are pushing out there, but it also depends on the professional who's working, right? Uh, it's a yeah. classic case. Uh, most of the professionals who succeed in this industry are self-starters, right? And I'm g- g- going to give you my example because uh, I have been accused of this, uh, of over-delivering on clients, right? I have been accused of. not listening to the leadership team when they have set an agenda and because i felt that i could do more and just a little more just a little more right till it became an issue for the uh, company as well i had very good mentors who told me that you know this is not the way to live your life you need to have a balance but to a young aggressive you know ambitious professional it didn't really matter at that point of time i think this also comes with a lot of emotional maturity as you grow in your profession as you grow in life i think that is when that balance comes in you know you realize that there is a need for balance i remember the first time uh, one of my mentors turned around and told me that you know what are you doing right go and have a life 
to get a life beyond work because I was working 16, 17 hours a day and I had no idea what was outside. My my response to that question was to turn around and ask, what is life? This is life. This is life for me, right? Yeah. I think it, it, it has to, you know, both ends have to understand that and this only comes... Uh, I can only talk about my example and I'm sure there are others in the industry who might resonate with that. It has to come from both ends. Parul, would you want to weigh in on that? I I think probably I'll add a little bit more before Parul steps in here. They have to prove to themselves the first thing and they have to prove to the bosses and they have to prove to their colleagues. So they actually, because young people come there, they don't have responsibilities, there's nothing. They put in so much of efforts. Now you actually put the bar here on the Mm. top. Now, to reach the bar, rest of the life, you'll be struggling. Don't put the, push the bar like that. Have the bar, but you, at the same time, try to understand how much your body, your mind, your lifestyle can permit you. You need to keep assessing that on a regular basis and keep that bar moving up and down where, where, where and when it's required. But are we doing this? Is that what we call the foolishness of the youth? I'll not say it's foolish because that it's a, it's a hard work. It's a hard work. <laughs> they actually want to like and stabilize because they want to make sure that their life and their work is you know stable. For that, yeah. they work so hard. I don't say it's foolishness, but after some time, when you realize that, I mean, when your body is giving up, when you don't listen to your body, when you don't listen to your emotions, then the same thing actually that's strength once upon a time that's turned out to be. Foolishness or weakness later. Parul, you had something to add to this point. Yes, I think uh, firstly, I fully agree with what uh, John and you both are saying. Sure, both of you have a point to offer. But what uh, what we've been observing is uh, that there is a huge connect between the deliverables that are being promised and between what is possible, especially in the post-COVID era. So right. there, there seems to be almost a blind, blind optimism going forward. Uh, you know, pushing forward the same deliverables of media, knowing very well that they can't happen. So this mm. causes is causing a lot of stress and emotional uh, problems. So I think what John has said that you must draw a line is even more important uh, now because you will not, you will, you will fail to deliver on those things. Secondly, I think some of those deliverables can only be done by the top leadership. They are actually being made to do to the younger people who do not mm. have the skill set or the emotional bandwidth, or the professional bandwidth to push those kind of deliverables. Right. So I think you have to calibrate the deliverables. Uh, this is, of course, a long term. It's easy for me to sit here and say that. But the fact is that a lot of the PR plans uh, are drawn from the point of view of the leadership and not in the point of view from the people who actually have to deliver it. So that right. is a very big emotional uh, lack of empathy of the leadership, I would say. Sorry, Tarun. But there is a little bit of a lack of empathy among the PR leadership towards, you know, their employees. And that's not unique to PR. I would not say that's unique to PR. That's unique to many, many sectors. And currently, that that tendency has become heightened because of COVID. Because the deliverables uh, are so stretched and uh, PR being uh, not being uh, sort of considered a priority at business activity, it becomes even more difficult for uh for the leadership to to get the client to stay on, so you get forced to offer more more deliverables. But I, but in India, it's a very peculiar feudal kind of problem. And uh, you know, uh, I I would to some extent yes, it comes with experience, but it also comes with your personality. You know, if you are a young man, uh, he will not be so cowed down than a young woman. I mean, I've seen this uh, so many people. So it's a bit of a feudal indoctrination also. Why we agree to these deliverables? Because we are used to listening to the bade papa. So we will agree. We will sort of, uh, this is a term with John uses, but it's very apt. You know, we do listen to the bade papa and say, okay, sir, whatever you are, we may not say, sir, we may say, you know, Raman or whatever, but uh, we will agree. Finally, we will agree yeah. to whatever they are saying. And I'm not going to name the person, but was very, very senior in the PR system. And uh, I heard the second or third hand that uh, he took on a huge client who was in a crisis communication. And he told the client that I cannot, uh, I can promise you one thing, that whenever the stories are being written about you, your point of view will be taken. Now, this is a very, very senior person. And I was so impressed that in a crisis, the tendency of a PR person is to say, 
that sir only your narrative will happen but he did not say that he said even if it's a negative story i will ensure that they take a quote from me he did right. not talk about changing the narrative so this is the kind of empathetic understanding he had and he did not over promise so no. i just want to share this so that's perfectly fine i see there is no apology needed on that uh, leadership teams are equally responsible but i have been in agencies where you know uh, you were just given the plan after the pitch process is approved and everything you just given the plan and said deliver right and you're sitting there and feeling that how how do i start where do i start what does this even mean right the pr strategy and approach absolutely made no sense to me and that is where you end up working from 7 in the morning to 3 in the night and you know get into that rigmarole of a very, very nasty uh, unhealthy lifestyle right when i started my agency i would say uh, it took me some time to understand that i was always a one woman army right but learning to grow from there is one of the biggest learnings that one does right and thankfully for us i try and make sure that the team is as involved in it as i am right nothing can happen without you know the delivery as such and that is equally important it makes a lot of sense for uh, you know the teams also to be equally involved in something like this and especially when new business is concerned and you're right when you talk about men versus women i think that's a very very apt uh, definition you know apt example to give given our cultural setting and for me as well i've been in the industry now for almost 20 years i think it's only in the last 3 or 4 years that i've learned to make sure that i recognize this pattern and learn how to break it and that did come about with moshmi being introduced to my life uh, moshmi that is somebody that all of us know very well yeah she introduced and helped me recognize this pattern and break it so it doesn't matter which stage of your career you are at or how senior you are unless you recognize this pattern and learn to break it i think there's no progress that can be made you'll keep repeating the same mistake over and over again uh do we start, we do have a lot of questions pouring in and uh, stuff that we started our conversation with i think still people want us to answer that when we spoke about you know people dissing pr on social media platforms how what would be your best advice on pushing back how does one respond to it we are often told by a lot of our leadership teams to ignore it you know rehne do no matlab so that kind of stuff which always happens but i don't think that's a healthy practice no, it, it, it's a beautiful way of telling ignore it because it's not no. happening to you it's happening to the person who is directly involved so right. for you 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 know if you you had 10 employees 20 employees if one goes other person will come but for them they have only one life right if somebody trying to target you and tell you try to deem you then it look at how it's going to affect your entire psyche unfortunately what is happening currently in olden days people have time and energy to listen to you to understand your perspective today you don't have that much of time right because they think that aajkal everybody even the people who doesn't even understand about a lot of things looking at couple of you know courses or probably one day or some something on the facebook they say or they know everything about you know how india and china go to war right yeah. they actually have their own judgment on everywhere everything and in spite right. they don't do anything they don't even contribute one single rupee for you know taxes in the country but they have comments from everything and everybody and right. people also are so insensitive small thing happen they want to share to the world and they want to unko badas nikalni hai so because why the parents also treated them like that like rajas maharajas and if they are not happy parents will say theek hai beta hum theek hai adjust karenge if you have this kind of attitude if somebody comes and talks to you you are not able to deliver probably you didn't understand the person or they, that person has not understand they feel you're wrong to them they feel you do not have any right and they, they feel that they have right to put you down and talk nonsense about you and what they do they don't even come to you and ask you hey yeah, i mean currently what is actually happening i want to understand before i take an action i want to like really look at that is this what you said is this what you're doing they don't have time because they have worry they they become trigger happy they just want to go and put all that kind of muck and critical kind of thing and you know 
uh, on the Facebook or on the social media, and then mm-hmm. they'll wait for somebody to respond. Whenever somebody responds supporting that, they feel it's like a kind of you know orgasm, in literally. And they get that kind of kick again and again. And they, if you see, these are few little individuals. They not only do with you, they do with everybody around. They basically become critical kind of, you know, beings. But generally, if you actually want to deal with this kind of person, always try to have personal relationship with people whom you're working with. Talk to them and understand them. And also before the person is going, make sure the person understood everything what you're conveying. Right, because so they're paying you money, and you promise like ten articles, so you have to do ten articles. If you do nine articles, and they do very well, one article you miss because the time is not or whatever it may be. But that one article, they can actually like you know, uh, you know, create a lot of problem for you. So have communication, explain, and help them ask them. Okay, what what else I can do? How else I can do? Okay, this I I come up with a lot of things. You know, some of times, you know, uh, some patients book an appointment on our portal. And some of our therapists doesn't do the sessions because they didn't get message or whatever it may be. Now the person will write an email to me that in this uh, website is very bad. That this is very not good. I mean, no, they, they 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 show so much. Then I will say very clearly, my sincere apology. I understand your anguish. What is that I can do for you? I have a conversation with them. Trust me. After the first conversation, they become calm and they'll have a next session with the same doctor as well, right? Mm-hmm. That means any time if this, if you understand if you you can also anticipate this person is going to do something like that you can see that person see through them so have a conversation with them but don't allow them to go away with a smile if they go away with a smile yeah go ahead see this works when you have let's say it's an employee situation right uh, what happens when a lot of times PR guys are caught unawares and they're caught off guard. when somebody randomly posts up on twitter and starts targeting them right in such situations we've had uh, industry bodies also respond to it and you know the, but the more attention you give them it fuels that conversation right more and more they want like you said you know it validates their feelings and it gives them a euphoric high and they want that kind of attention but ignoring it is not an option not ignoring it is also not an option right well, here if that person is related to you you have some kind of conversation connect then you have to like connect to the person if a random guy actually say something a random kind of thing for that you don't have to respond you keep doing your work and keep moving your head in the right direction random people you don't have to respond at any point of time if you respond you are actually jumping into the muck directly or indirectly then get in touch with that person that is better but nothing not nothing on social media Uh, Parul, your views on this? Yes, yeah. yeah, so I have slightly uh, uh, different view on this because I think the problem is that you cannot ignore the person. You have to engage with them. At some point, you have to end up engaging with them because they are part of your stakeholders. Correct. So that is the biggest issue. I I see I see several problems on both sides. I'll start off with the naming and shaming thing. See the naming and shaming. We all know the the heart of the problem is a poorly poorly done media pitches. And uh, and uh, you know incessant calling by PR professionals, not mm-hmm. updating the list. That is the homework which PR professionals should be doing. So even if you address one person like a monstrous hydra, then other pop up because you haven't addressed the core issue of mm-hmm. pitching the right story. For, uh, you know, or not calling. Sometimes I get calls. Uh, I would say eighty percent of my calls from PR professionals. In that, uh, uh, what story can you do? Now it's not my job to tell you what story I can do on the show. You have to tell me, but they are unable to tell me. That to me is a huge failure. If right. you are, if you don't want to be taken as a call, uh, you know, call kind of uh, call, uh, call center thing, then you improve the quality of your pitch. Uh, what John said about maintaining a relationship is very important because uh, you know, comment on the story of journalists. Build up a relationship with them before that. Give some insight. Give mm. information not related to your client. You know, give yes. give some feedback. Post some articles. Tag them. Then you build up. Then you have that kind of thing, and the person also knows that you are actually a source of good information and not a source of only you know uh, not just a conveyor of information about a client. It changes the relationship in a very mm. big way. 
secondly, I would say that uh, I this is the age of Insta complaint. You know, it started off with customer care, and now journalists are behaving in the same way. You just have an Insta complaint, and you know, you say what you feel like, and you're powerful. So you know, you you actually behave like an asshole. Be very honest. So I am very much against naming and shaming uh, PRs or anybody for that matter. And I do think that PR professionals should take it up. If it is your mistake, admit it and uh, give steps. If it is not your mistake, uh, tweet something from your handle explaining what happened. Do it once and then close it. Uh, I would even say that you should escalate it to the person's boss. Write a write an email and to the person you said this and this is what you know. One should do it. Start doing it because unless you push back, it's not uh, really going to happen. And then the anger will burst one day, and somebody will say something. A PR person will say something, which uh, I have to say that uh, PR professionals are extremely patient with the kind of abuse. And I would say it's abuse. They say they say it. they are really really patient. I must say. So, uh, but please understand that journalism is not. Uh, at the heart of it is a lack of understanding of what a journalist role also is. It's not a journalist role to do your story. So once you understand this, you will be able to work on your editorial point. Last thing is there that in extreme cases, I am in favor of brands blacklisting journalists. I'm being very blunt about it. You should actually blacklist those people and say we will not give you stories. Mm -hmm. And it works very fast with journalists, believe me. A journalist yeah. who will not touch your story will will react the opposite way the moment you say you can't do this. Story. We're not giving you this story. So in you extreme know, cases, you should also do that. Yeah. No, I completely agree on that. It's your client and you need to be a team. Worst case scenarios happen when a journalist complains and the client drops you like a hot potato. Yeah. Yeah. And that further demotivates that agency or the PR professional who's working on your account as a team. The client and the, and the agency need to work together to make sure what works for the entire ecosystem as such, right? Pose so this question to both of you: Can EQ be cultivated in an organization? Can EQ be learned? So, what should leadership teams do in PR agencies to make sure that this is a culture that permeates, you know, throughout? Yes. If you really ask this question, EQ can be learned. Yes, we all learn this. We are not born with this, right? We, some of those things we learn from our parents. Some of those things we learn from our teachers. Some of those things we learn from our leaders and how they manage, how they work, how they deal with. And these emotions, when I'm, when we're talking about emotions, and you said, no, sometimes actually the, you know, agencies or the companies leave the agencies like a hot potato. I have seen some of the agencies leaving that not because of the money, not because of the work. It's because they both are not on the same page of their emotion. Right. And they don't understand, you know, they feel that you're not doing enough or you're not able to convey them. We are doing, but you you have expectation, which is too beyond. When if they're actually come on the both on the same page, and I don't think, I mean, people can actually work for very long. That's exactly what happens with the big, you know, your industry leaders, the top five, top 10 companies, and they do work like that. And the second part comes here is learning purpose. You know, when you see your bosses, having good emotions and dealing with the emotions, not hiding them, not, you know, or running away from them, not neglecting them, not telling you, it's okay, don't even give importance to. If they don't do that, okay, sit down, okay, what is that it's hurting you? What is that, you know, what is the mistake you have done? What is the good thing you have done? If you actually have these conversations and probably a little bit of training in understanding their own emotions, how these, because the person might be hardworking, the person might have certain kind of sensitive, you know, issues in their life. Because the sensitive issues, if anything comes and hits that, they can break down. But here, in front of the like, you know, colleagues, you can't cry, you can't show your weakness. So you have to show. In the process of showing, you're actually giving a different persona to people and under a galreo, under a parishanore. If you actually help them to understand their emotions through some training programs. And also how to express, how to understand, how to express the, their emotions to other people, how to understand other people's emotions accurately, and how to manage that. If you actually give them training, I'm 100% sure they will all can learn very well and they can use that knowledge in terms of handling their emotions and people's emotions very well.
Yeah, I think this could be a good, you know, session when somebody does an induction program. I think EQ is one of the things that need to be put in. What are your views on this? Uh, I think John is very right. Definitely EQ can be taught. But finally, the EQ has to come from the leadership. That is, uh, you know, like a given. Uh, unless the leadership demonstrates it and supports their staff, you will not uh, be able to really implement it as a system to the organization. If they, if they, the if the staff is not being treated well, professionals they are confident of the support they get. So that kind of confidence is required. That uh, t- tomorrow, if I don't want to work with someone for whatever reason, the uh, person is being abusive. Then uh, and clients have seen clients also can be extremely abusive. So then, then it's up to the leadership to step in and say, "Sorry, uh, this is not uh, something we entertain, and we don't entertain clients like that." That's the only way I can see it sort of being implemented in a practical way. Completely understand. And I must say that's something that I've learned from them as well and I've implemented in my agency as well. You know, we walk away from clients or from journalists and we are not averse to blacklisting both of them for being abusive. Yeah, there's something interesting actually I noticed right now. You know, how much you guys need the companies. Yes. And they need the same amount of you guys as well. But what is that makes these PR companies so vulnerable to succumb to the pressure of their demands? I don't know. Probably you guys need to look at that. You know, the over, you know, promising and under delivering, you're making an unhappy client. But promising accurately and delivering accurately, you can make more happy clients. I don't know. Probably you guys think about that. I think it's one. Sorry. Uh, so um, it also depends on the profit levels that the company wants to maintain, one. And second, the sensitivity or the issue of the leadership team. Do they view their workforce as hands and legs to deliver profit? Okay. Or do they actually want to create a reputation within the reputation industry uh, who will look at creating a band of happy clients? I think that's where the part of the matter lies. Uh, Parul. Yeah, I'd like to add two points here. Uh, one, uh, one is that uh, you know you mentioned earlier about clients, you know, uh, saying that let's not offend a journalist or or they complain the journalist will complain directly. So a journalist's effort will always be to go to the main source of the story, which in this case would be the client. So that is a journalist's job. But you have to educate your client that look, if you keep giving direct access, you will have no buffer, and especially in a crisis, you will not be able to. Uh, split the two and and offer another point of view, and you will be startled by the journalist calling you, and you may blurt out something which is not which not should be said. So I think that is something which the client should be educated about. That what is the role of PR? It's not just handing over the press. It's you know uh, being the first gatekeeper of the information, and in some cases the final gatekeeper. And it's to their advantage to have this buffer. The second thing which I which I have noticed is that which I want to say is that. PR is often said that he PR ka, PR kar rahi hai, ya, ya, that is a PR stunt or whatever. It's derogatory way of But PR is at the heart of being human. I mean, right now, even I'm doing my PR by talking to all of you. John is doing some PR. Tarun is doing some PR. Your dog sitting there is doing his own PR that you better give me my biscuit and food. So there is no human being who is devoid of PR. So why is this animosity? I would say embrace PR. Be happy to be sort of PR professional because it's you can't be human without doing someone. The moment you press it, I am, this is my name, you're doing PR. Isn't it ironic that PR themselves, the com- entire community needs a lot of PR for itself. And this is a reputation <laughs> yeah, management yeah. that you're able to solve for the entire community. Yeah, but I do believe there's a lot of... I think of it's hope. what John said that why is there so much insecurity? I think, John, I think it's worth exploring. You know, while there is a lot of worth exploring, a lot of other verticals in communication, I think that is where PR... I, agencies or PR professionals have been working in silos and with PR POI that is one of the intentions that we want to kind of create we want to create a camaraderie within the PR community end of the day it's not it, I mean it's okay there is enough business for everyone you know you don't really have to be that you guys, you guys have more business than what you can ex- actually expect but the exactly. problem everybody wants to get only that <laughs> so, there is more than enough business for what is not everybody. business is so yeah. much everywhere. But you need to have innovative ways of reaching out to those areas as well. Correct. 
and you know there is there has to be a certain amount of camaraderie out there for people to be able to you know encourage them also other young professionals also to join the industry because what gets shown out there is not the exact true picture of what is happening and people like parul who are now writing about pr and talking about it i think there is a lot of myth busting that is happening out there a lot of communication the more communication that goes out on pr the more easier it is for people to understand and get a true picture of it uh, parul we have one question directly addressed to you since you are also sure. a part of the communication process what according to you uh, you know should institutions be doing when they think of adding eq as part of their curriculum so uh, you know one i i think the, it should be actually formally taught the psychology of communication should be formally taught uh, at organizations like imc there is actually uh, the psychology of selling also which should be formally taught in mean, marketing and selling there are people who, who specialize in consumer psychology so that is something which uh, which can be learned and taught and in that you can figure out eq the second there should be actually a paper on that there should be a given uh, for example when i did my psychology honors we had to do a, a paper on sociology plus data science so it was not enough to just do psychology you had to do like a data paper this paper a uh, sorry a paper on statistics as well as a paper on sociology so the right. whole ecosystem has to be taken into account and to me it's extremely surprising that a very important uh, ecosystem like your emotions which are so central to you are never considered you are supposed to deliver ignoring emotions so which, which is a quite a ridiculous kind of uh, thing so i am seeing of the world all the sophia uh, colleges all the xlri the xavier institute they should all actually institutionalize a uh, relationship management i would say uh, apart from uh, psychology of selling and uh, consumer side relationship management. and of course uh, like you had said that they should be in the induction for the program you should have bring in a clinical psychology and have have a workshop for them let them learn and let them learn it you know through in a in a structured way through the year in a in regular way and a lot of uh, firms like ad factors in the current scenario have ca- counselors on call so i think that's something worth thinking about oh, that's brilliant interestingly we have a counselor on board as well uh, where people can reach out and speak to her as and when they like you know if they are facing an issue uh, i think it's a very good practice it brings in a lot of relief uh, you know for people who are struggling but it's interesting when you point that out like when we are taught management when we are taught communication and when we enter the industry there is a huge disconnect because that entire chapter on relationships and emotions is missing and i expect you to to handle very complex relationships from day one without knowing without being trained in it so that is a big mistake Uh, John, your views on this? You know, uh, what you said is absolutely right. But the problem is, you know, we do not actually invest into that something like that. We think that, hey, yeah, this is normal. I mean, you know, like when you're managing your relationship with your mom, dad, and everybody around, you have multiple relationships. What is the big deal? You can handle anything. But it's not true. Mm-hmm. Handling emotions and people and relationship, you need to understand yourself. if you really look at that if you ask anybody in the industry or outside tell me about yourself who are you 90% of the people find it very difficult they wait their, their minds goes into blank and think about what they speak anybody who understand about themselves who understand the world very well so this particular training of emotional intelligence or you know uh, uh, complex relationship understand the integration with the world you know these are all things we uh, you know by default we think we learn everything but no we have to like when somebody has to teach us to, and i'll just ask you simple thing what do you think about objectivity and many people read and give good definition but they don't really practice that how to practice if they know 99% of problems they will not encounter because they see everything of you and they don't allow the emotions to involve into that so somebody has to train them how to understand emotion how to read the signal how to understand read the signals of other people how to manage them how to regulate those things somebody who is trained to that if they actually can take few hours of training probably once in a month time probably in the time people can learn things and they can actually handle themselves much better that's exactly what we do in our therapy we train our clients 
in terms of understanding themselves understanding their emotions regulate their emotions in turn we encourage them to do the same thing with people outside right then when they become complete individuals then the problems what they are facing they will not encounter the same problems again they'll be able to handle better right. so it's important and mandatory to have this particular course not for pr professionals but for everybody whoever is going through college education very interesting i do hope that uh, that happens i remember when i did my course in nlp you know that was one of the fields that are also felt should be mandatory in a lot of colleges because again it deals with relationships in, if i'm not taught psychology in depth maybe that might not be everybody's cup of tea but yeah. dealing with emotions as such or dealing with how to manage relationships irrespective of whether you join pr advertising digital or whichever field of communication or marketing for that matter is something that needs to be uh, you know hand held at some point or the other great so we are running out of time i would now would like to wrap it up by asking each one of you to help me give us give the entire pr community three things that they would want that you want them to take from this session parul will start with you so i would uh, so three things i would say is that push back with the journalists that push back with with data with evidence with sense and get your pitches right uh right. secondly i would say stand up for yourself like john it said explore yourself further uh try and understand why we as indians find it so difficult to say no why why do we find it so difficult to say no i would say that uh, invest in enjoying yourself that i would say that, you know uh, invest in enjoying yourself taking a break Uh, it's not the end of the world. The story doesn't end. Awesome, uh, John. So first, prioritize yourself. If you are not there, whatever you're doing is just useless. It doesn't really make any sense. So you should be the center of everything. What you're doing, whether it is work, relationship, or anything. So prioritize mm-hmm. yourself. That's the first thing. Second one is understand. Mm-hmm. Understanding not just your emotions. but also other people as well and uh, understand to a level where you can actually start to see things which people are not actually telling you directly with the words but you're picking up from them but accurately and third one is learning learning something is very important because we think that okay i learn everything i understand everything no what is you actually learning from the internet right now on the social media is half of that is completely fake and without facts is a psychology thing but it is psychology doesn't say things like that. you need to have lot of you know uh, material behind that through research behind that to tell okay this is going to work so try to reach out to the places where you can actually accurately learn so that that not only helps you to live a better life but also help other people around you to have a better life as well because if you are stable and sensible and people around you become more stable and sensible as well if you are unstable you're actually making other people feel comfortable as well and second is understanding third one is learning probably that's what i feel you should actually consider on and on that note would like to thank both of you thank you so much for you know being a part of our in today uh, and taking out the time to speak to the entire pr community i'm sure a lot of them will benefit greatly from the advice that you've given today thank you so much right thank you so much uh, good wishes for a great session Thank you, Tarun. Thank you, John. Thank you to everybody who is listening to this, and I really appreciate everybody to be emotionally stable and make your life more beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today, and we will see you next Saturday for another interesting conversation on PR and communication on all about PR.